Patrick Lang. He is taking major time out of him. Oh. And here comes Patrick Lang just flying past his counterpart here from <laughs> Germany. Patrick Lang now moves into fourth position, overtaking Andy Bercherer. And now he has his sights set on Ben Hoffman from the USA. Can it be German? He's only two, in, uh, two minutes and 30 seconds down from Heather Jackson and a further another minute away from Anya Berenek with quite a few miles to run. So the women's race is getting interested, uh, interesting in between second, third and fourth and fifth places right now out on the uh, you know energy lab uh, as Mar uh, Daniela Reef is just about to attack that section of the course. So Marinda Carfrey is just about to attack on Heather Jackson and also Anya Berenek, Daniela Reef continues to lead. Jan Fredino with just a couple of miles to run, guys. He's coming up the uh. hill, the big hill. He's just gone through about 24 miles, and he's got those two miles to go. So this is an uphill grade we saw in 1989. This is when Dave Scott lost a step, and Mark Allen took him home. But this is it, the final hill. And again, you'll see that labored stride of Jan Ferdino, and it is because running uphill at a grade like this at the end of a long eight-hour day is difficult. It's pretty hard. Give it to him. He's <laughs> cranking, and this is him on the verge of a two, being a two-time Ironman world champion. Yeah, the Timex leaderboard car is approaching the corner of Palani Road and the Queen Ka'umano Highway. Once they hit half to run in the 2016 Ironman World Championship, has the world at his feet. There's nothing he hasn't done in the sport of triathlon. And today he's almost set to take his second consecutive Ironman world title. Patrick Lang, on the other hand, he is an upstart. He's a Kona rookie and he's come in here, he's in third place right now, and only thing that stands in between him and Jan Fredino is another German, Sebastian that, Kinley, the 2014 world champion. That's right, and there is a very good chance that he might catch second place, only yeah. because he's a light on his feet runner. He, again, doesn't know what it feels like to run down that hill. Again, by the way, when you finish turning left off of Polani, you still have a mile to go. Oh, you have to plenty. do a long stretch along the Kuakini before that Hualalai. It's not like Palani and you're done. Although you do hear the finish line, you're not done. And as you said, Michael, I think experience is an important thing on this race. But that hill that uh, Ferdino is about to go up and then go down uh, Palani, if you've never done this race before, like Patrick Lang, you're like, oh man, here's a little hill. I'll try to use this to get some time back. Not knowing that there's so much pain left <laughs> in front of you. That run down Polani is brutal. And when you're in a tight race, as Patrick Lang and uh, Sebastian Keenly are, you still got elite drive. It's not a free ride. You don't jump on an escalator when you get on elite drive. You still got to run hard all the way you in. You are dead right there, Matt. And uh, let's give you an update on our top 11 runners as they are uh, just about to head off to the finish line. Jan Fredino leads with a mile and a half to run. Sebastian Kinley in second place. Patrick Lang, that makes a German clean sweep in one, two, and three. Ben Hoffman in fourth. Andy Buscherer in fifth. Tim O'Donnell in sixth. We've got Boris Stein, another German in seventh. Frederick van Leerde from Belgium, followed by another Belgian athlete, Bart Arnitz in ninth. And then we've got Ivan Rania from Spain in tenth. And USA, Andy Potts is in 11th place. So we've got three from the USA, and we have a ton of Germans in the top 10 right now. So we've got Stein, Lang, and Kinley Fredino, four Germans, three from the USA, and two from Belgium. So that is absolutely amazing racing right now. Absolutely, in that fourth through sixth position, that's gonna be some pretty tight racing too. You've got Boscher, Hoffman, and uh, Tim O'Donnell all within about 45 seconds of each other. That top five is a pretty elite finish here in the World Championships is a, a place where uh, those athletes have finished. Uh, Tim O'Donnell has been third and fifth, I believe. Hoffman a second place. But right now we're looking at the two leaders, Jan Ferdino, uh, obviously up front with a, a fair gap on Sebastian Keenley. But Sebastian Keenley, uh, you know, looks like he's tiring. Obviously, he's uh, very far into a marathon, but he's doing all the little things uh, he has to do. He will be getting word most likely that Patrick Lang is coming. Uh, he probably, you know, he's got to take people's word for it. If they tell you he, he's coming, he's really coming. But, man, Sebastian looks really good. He looks really good. He's, he's, taken, he's taken his ice in and his water. He's shaking it out. He knows what you need to do. You need to stay loose. His form looks perfect. Don't forget, guys, you know, we wouldn't normally say Sebastian Keenly is someone who can necessarily close all that quickly if you weren't watching the last two years. But a 1-11 he ran with a sprint finish with Tim Reed uh, just a few weeks ago at the 70.3 World Championships. If Patrick Lane gets up to him, 
he's going to do what he needs to do. You know, we, at the press conference, uh, somebody asked him uh, a, a question, and, and Sebastian was referring to uh, Twitter and how sometimes he gets likes from his other pros on Twitter. And he said, uh, Tim Reed, whenever he likes my photos or my comments, I see his profile picture, and Tim Reed's profile picture <laughs> has him finishing in front of Sebastian Keenly at 70.3 Worlds. And Sebastian said, if that happens again, it won't happen like that again. <laughs> and I think if it comes down to a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder race, Sebastian just had that experience. He knows what it feels like to be on the wrong side of it, and he's going to put up a really, really hard fight, guys. Well, the foot speed of Jan Fredino is still quite high as he now runs down Polani Road for the very last time today. The Hulka One One run course is coming to a close for Fredino. He's just one mile away from the finish line right now. And as you were saying before, Matt, you've got to close this race out. It's not going to run it for you. When you get to the bottom of Polani Road, your quads are just absolutely on fire. You've ridden 112 miles, 180K. You've run 42 kilometers. You've, you know, 26 miles. It's absolutely insane. You know, the enormity of the, the challenge that we you know, give to ourselves as triathletes and Ironman triathletes. But Jan Fredino now, look at this, just striding out, just not wanting to lose anything. No more seconds to anybody else in the field. The only person that's making up time on Jan Fredino is Patrick Lang from Jan Fredino here with just over one mile to run is now heading toward the finish line. Well, we didn't have Patrick Lang at the pre-race press conference, but you know what? The goal is to be at the post-race press <laughs> yeah. conference, as every athlete knows. And Patrick Lang, you'll be there today. You'll be there next year at the pre-race as well. So an incredible show from a guy that has very little experience, but well guided by Ferris Al Sultan, the 2005 Ironman World Champion is his coach so Jan Fredino making it look easy he had those couple of uphills where he showed us his mortality he showed us that he is in fact human but right now it's back to super Jan as he rounds that left turn onto the Kuakini highway and just about a mile to go from this intersection it is almost time to celebrate this world yeah, champion and, and as he was saying uh, Michael uh, Jan Fredino earlier he said if if I have a good race I will have a world championships and uh, he's had a good race. He knows that he's better than the rest of them. If he's got a good day, no matter what uh, special things they have up their sleeves, special equipment, if he has a good day and he puts his swim, bike and run and transitions together, he's going to win a world championships. And uh, we haven't often seen an athlete with the pedigree to win big championship races as for Dino. And here he comes uh, just adding uh, another treat to his uh, his fireplace. A little treat to his fireplace. Yeah, yeah a little, like a little trophy for his mantle. Nicely there done. There it is, trying. Uh, a palmer, as you will, to his uh, accolades. But Jan <laughs> Fredino, so, and, and, and we talked about this. You know, he wanted to go sub eight. It's it's eight hour and one minute right now. So yeah. he didn't do that. He also is not going to take down Craig Alexander's record. That's 8.03.56. He's not going to round this uh, three quarters mile or 1,200 meters in that time but he's gonna be one of the top times ever. And guess what? I always feel like the most important thing for a true athlete, an athlete, a competitor is winning the race. If he had won this race in eight hours 30, he still won the race. The time is a little bit less relevant. So right now, Jan Ferdino, if we, if we wanna just say he's getting the job done in style, overtaking age groupers that are only half a mile into their race on this Hoka One One run course. Yeah, as we said, he's still got a little bit more to go, but uh, Jan Fredino, he's hes the one person uh, on this course currently that can uh, rest up a little bit, shake the arms out. He's got a gap. Um, you know, he might have had that carrot as we were talking about a going sub eight or breaking the course record. Now that he knows that that's out of reach, um, there's not, you know, he's always going to go as, as well as he can, but uh, he can make sure he can serve so he can get to that finish line um, and celebrate in, in a different manner than he did before. He had a child on the way last year. This year he's uh, got a child to celebrate with. I think it's going to be a little bit more special of a victory uh, with uh, three people on the finish line versus the, the two last year. Well, well, we did hear that uh, his son Luca, who's about eight months old, is here with his wife Emma, and we've heard that he hasn't done a single night feed uh, since since that guy's been born. <laughs> but we also heard as soon as this race is over, he is on night uh, He's duty, tapping in. And new fathers around uh, the world can appreciate that. He's getting his hall pass revoked, and he's going to be up <laughs> in the middle of the night, probably starting tonight, <laughs> if not tomorrow, uh, knowing the powerful woman that he's married to, Emma 
<laughs> Emma Ferdina, Emma, Emma Snowsell, also Olympic uh, gold medalist. But all joking aside, this or seriousness aside, this man is on Hua about to be on Hualalai, and it is getting done. Greg, what do you think? Yeah, he's getting it done, and uh, he's doing it in uh, classy fashion as normal. Uh, Jan just has uh, just two streets to go. He's going to make that ride on Hualalai right now. This is it. He's got a downhill section for about 300 yards. Then he'll make that right turn on Ali'i Drive with about 700 yards to go to the finish line. Um, you know, this uh, road has been made famous by Paul and Yubi Fraser in the past with Karen Smyers, where, you know, Paula fell apart and Smyers went by, but I don't think anything's going to happen like that today. Jan Fredino seems to be just setting his pace and ready to go. Sebastian Kinley, on the other hand, he's on Polani Road right now, just ascending uh, his race as well. So he's almost at a mile to go. So Jan Fredino is around about a half a mile, a little bit more than half a mile ahead of second place right now. And then you've got Patrick Lang, who's closing fast right now. So Jan Fredino about to make that right-hand turn onto a Lee drive. Yeah, you're exactly right, though, uh, Matt. There is no way that Sebastian Kinle is going to sacrifice second. No. no less to anyone but a, a, a fellow German. His stakes are too high. So Patrick Lang, I think, is going to run short of his, his, uh, his charge there of, of getting on second. But third place, phenomenal. Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal. So here he is in, in overhead shots of Elite Drive. The world famous, the triathlon famous Banyan Tree is coming up on uh, camera left here uh, for Dino's right arm. And when he runs past that impressive uh, historical monument, the Banyan Tree, he will be only a couple hundred meters away. The At this point, there's really nothing going on other than a massive energy that's just drawing him in, that energy from his own family, the crowd that loves him, right. us, everyone back home. You're watching this online on this TV screen at your favorite bike shop. Maybe you're in Boulder, Colorado. Maybe you're in Bend, Oregon. But you're watching and you're giving energy. He's feeling it all. I'm not trying to be silly here. This guy is getting every bit of your energy because oh, we're all excited to see Jan Fredino get it done as a defending Ironman World Champion. And there's a few moments in this race where the pain goes away and uh, if the pain's ever going away on the day for Jan Ferdino, it's right about now as he goes under the Banyan tree. Uh, you know, he's getting everything ready for his finish line. He's going to zip up that jersey, make sure the sponsors, uh, you know, get their call out. Uh, but Jan Ferdino uh, coming now just within about 200 meters, still smiling, still grimacing. Maybe that pain hasn't left him yet, but, man, this guy is pumped. And uh, just a few hundred meters from being two-time, back-to-back Ironman world champion. And Jan Fredino has to has to really just uh, be given a lot of credit for getting it done in a little bit different fashion than he did last year. He left and had to run so much time with Sebastian Kinle. He's now got a four minute cushion. He'll really be able to celebrate. But it's to his credit, this guy. He planned the season well. He attacked the uh, Ironman here well. He did everything he needed to do first, was actually first through the water much of the day, but he let uh, another athlete come out of the water first. He got on the bike and just bided his time, did what he needed to do, came off out of transition in first place, and here he is coming down to Lee Drive, gonna win this race <laughs> Gonna take again. it for the second time in consecutive style here. He won the Olympics in 2008. He's an Ironman 70.3 world champion. He's won Ironman Frankfurt in the past, also second place in Ironman Lanzarote for 2016, but now to be crowned for the second time in a row, the 2016 Ironman World Champion from Germany, Jan Frodino. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. He is on the ground, <laughs> happy as can be. A two-time, as you said, back-to-back -back Ironman world champion. This doesn't happen often, but Jan Fredino from Germany, he did it today, and he did it in an incredible time. Eight hours, six minutes, what a day. Yeah, and no doubt, you know, he was never, you know, he wasn't pushed the last 10 miles, but looking at him there, uh, how out of energy he is, he pushed and paced himself as well as he could in between two absolute legends. There you go, three of the best that have ever been in this sport. Dave Scott, Jan Ferdino, Mark Allen, uh, getting emotional for Jan Ferdino. No better way to get welcomed across the line at the World Championships than with the two best athletes that have ever been out here. And then legendary Mike Riley bringing him across the line and embrace, but that's six times Ironman champion, Dave Scott, Mark Allen, and then Jan Ferdino with two titles, hugging his wife, Emma Fredino. He did eight hours, six minutes, and 30 seconds. An incredible day today, and we have 